I'm off to another reading. Come join me. I'm going on a journey, journey to tranquility. tranquility. So, to kind of give a really quick, brief introduction of what we're doing here, um, th this play started, uh, well, I don't know, Stephanie, when did you actually start writing this play? Um, I don't know, like, eight, six months ago, eight, whatever, something, I wrote, like, a few scenes of it, and I was like, um, I wrote a few scenes of it, it was going to be a movie, and then, oh, yeah, and okay. then I was like, it's not a movie, <laughs> um, and then I was at Williamstown, and Theo and I, all three of us are what what Williamstown, and then we were talking about it, um, and then we started doing just development work with it in Williamstown for like the last the second month of Williamstown, um, and kind of worked with actors in the Apprentice Company and the Nana Company, um, and did readings of it um, and developed it, and then did a stage reading at the end of it, and then I moved to New York about six weeks ago, and so I've been working on it. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Facebook, and I started scrolling through pictures. I got one from my fifteenth birthday when we were in the back. Oh, the karaoke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember when we all sang altar? I'm probably trying to sing. Hey now. Great song. <laughs> well, when you can sing, all songs are. So great. I've been praying to figure out how to let my guilt turn into good, into change. Does volunteering help? I don't know. Praying helps, especially when I feel like I'm not just praying for myself. You loved it. Wait, wasn't she Buddhist? Yeah, but not all Buddhists are vegetarian. Although I don't really know how that works with karma, because you're not supposed to eat animals or kill things or whatever. One time I saw a monk who tried to get a mosquito off the sidewalk. But one time I saw a monk with an iPhone. And? I don't think they're supposed to have iPhones. Right? Are you <laughs> No, I really think they're supposed to be like zen and cut off and shit. That has nothing to do with karma though. No, that's just a monk thing. Yay! idea of like internalized loss and like fear of abandonment mm -hmm. and like the things that you do yeah. like that are projected forward because like um like Anna Sophia like how like her mom like gave her up when she was like very little and like the things that she like goes out of her like she's like the, what you say that I didn't even think about it because I loved you like the way in which you make yourself needed even in mm -hmm. abusive situations mm -hmm. or like unhealthy situations because it's like that is also fulfilling a need and acceptance, it's one of those things when a person holds a mirror up to you and you're like, I'm almost relieved. <laughs> like, yeah. that I don't have to keep putting on this act now. Yeah. Like, I, this has been here all along and like now I can just exhale and sort right. of accept myself. And so losing that thing that you like. That defined yourself. Like, yeah. It's all very yeah. Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> makes sense and just it's it mirrors up the other female friendships so there is that thing of the crash aspect of like how do people interact and who's related to who right. but what i really like is that there is still you have moments where you get to see each female friendship be like good there is some kind of like warmth and there's a love mm -hmm. and then we see that like disintegrate at times too right. but that was so nice to that culminate in meryl and robin at the end yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey Stephanie! Hi. So I'm Stephanie. <laughs> I'm from Hong Kong and Taiwan. I'm a playwright and actor. Um, I moved to New York five weeks ago, six weeks ago, and I've been writing and working on this play Puffin Heart along with other things um, for the past few months. So my personal like God, I don't have. I'm not specifically religious. Is Toni Morrison um, and. A lot of her books but specifically one that I read Sula I read I saw this interview of her where she talks about why she wrote it um, and how it kind of stemmed from this idea that female friendship when lost is never discussed um, and how important it is to see that female relationships are the crux of what it means to be a woman <laughs> um, not necessarily romantically but like that having a friend is something that is never discussed and like losing that friend is something that is never mourned basically mm -hmm. and like how do you grieve the loss of something that is not viewed as significant. I find readings always really interesting because if it's the right person, then I'm curious for more. 
if it's not, then I'm always frustrated. That's to me always a good thing um, because I, I, I know. Um, and I think when the right actor brings life to the character, regardless of how I wrote it, then I then it always feels to me as if it's right because I, 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 I find the connection between a character and an actor more important than whether or not they look or sound or feel right for the mm -hmm. character. Um, and I find that, like, I find, especially when characters read, um, in a way, very different from how I imagined, but very much the exact life I wrote into it is really affirming. So Thea and I have worked together for the past, I guess, five months, um, and I met him at Williamstown, where we started working together, and so a mentor once told me, Marsha Norman, said that when you um, pick a director for your play as a playwright, you have to know what, what they think is important about the play matches with what you think is important, and that's basically my gauge. Now when I talk to anyone about, you know, if they're interested in directing my work, I ask them, you know, what do you think was the most important about it after you read it? And I just know that if it matches, it matches, and then if, it, if those things match up, and if who we are matches up, then everything that they do as a director, I trust, mm -hmm. um, much in the way that all the edits I make as a writer, they trust will align with exactly what they tell me, and like the communication is fluid, um, and then we're able to hand over authority to each other when it comes to you know, direction and writing. For lots of reasons, because of all the themes that you know people don't see on stage, but personally, really, it's about women, relationships, immigrants, mental illness, all these things that when you put together, people often say are too much, like, why would you, like, those are five different plays. And I'm like, yeah, I know, because there are always plays about, this is a play about women, this is a play about mental illness, this is a play about immigration, but like, that's really not how life works. Like, your life is just everything at once. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you make everything at once both very normal and very much dramatic in the same way that a play about a dinner table is very normal and very dramatic. Um, and that like these women are normal human beings who happen to have lives, that's it. Um, and like how do you see that on a stage? There are lots of things that I wanted to work on in the play but really take a lot of work and it's really hard to edit plays without hearing it when I edit it. So um, one of the things that I think I'm kind of focusing on now is like what are the, the, like, the space, the headlay space in which everything is really zoned in on. Um, like those dramatic like unrealistic moments like mm -hmm. what are the rules of those worlds that I'm creating and like how do those worlds function as like inner thoughts um, that we recognize in our normal lives um, and then also in those relationships like how do we balance relationships that at, at one point feel really significant and at the other like you feel like you're losing and like that kind of push and pull that we feel every day but like in an hour right like you have to feel the whole life of these people in an hour and like those push and pull push and pull push and pull mm -hmm. and so that's something that i want to be normal yet dramatic um but not melodramatic and that's like a constant battle well thank you stephanie thank you. this was an amazing show this amazing play that i got to read for you and i'm really excited to see where this goes and where thank it takes you, you. Everybody, look out for Puffin Heart. <laughs> it's coming, okay? It's coming shortly. <laughs> Thank you again, yeah. Stephanie. <laughs> Bye. You're welcome to follow me on this journey.